uh, coroner for Sparmer County, Mr. Rusty Clevenger. Uh, I knew Rusty years ago from being uh, an investigator with the Solicitor's Seventh Office. Circuit uh, Solicitor's Office, mm -hmm. and, and it's my pleasure to see him elected, and, and it's good to be here today. Um, Rusty, one of the questions people have, knowing that your position is an elected position, mm -hmm. can anyone uh, just, just come and run for coroner in Sparmer County? Anyone that is qualified to run for coroner in Spartanburg County, and by law now there are requirements mm -hmm. uh, uh, that have even been reviewed by the federal government to make sure they were fair and equitable to everybody, but the requirements, just like the requirements now to run for sheriff uh, within a county, and those include uh, forensic expertise, education, or the mixture thereof. Okay. And when you say forensic education, people oftentimes, and as well as you know, uh, mm -hmm. from dealing with criminal cases, uh, they watch TV mm -hmm. and they hear C CSI, mm -hmm. uh, different uh, type of medical uh, examinations. Is there a requirement or, um, uh, or are you deemed as a medical examiner, as we hear that term? I am not deemed as a medical examiner. I rely on our medical examiner here in Spartanburg County to give us a cause of death and based on our investigation uh, of the autopsy and of the scene as well as investigative information from police agencies or the agencies that are in charge uh, with us to do those investigations to make a ruling on a cause and manner of death. Okay. And when you speak of agencies, I, I know um, being situated here in Spartanburg, you may from time to time uh, like I know you did in law enforcement, mm -hmm. you may have to call upon other similar agencies to yours outside of mm -hmm. Pierce Farmer County. Does that happen a lot? Uh, we have to do that from time to time. Our office has a number of different specialities within uh, that we call on. I have one investigator that's a registered nurse, another investigator that has a four-year forensic degree, criminal justice, uh, another forensic mm -hmm. investigator that I have that's actually my chief investigator is the only police officer in Spartanburg County that's been uh, qualified as an expert in crime scene investigation. And in my expertise from being a homicide detective as well as working in the solicitor's office uh, in years gone past, plus the forensic training that's been afforded to me by the county and the education they paid for uh, from the whole time I've been coming up. So that in essence is, is what we're relying on here in Spartanburg. I believe we're doing a pretty good job at it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You guys definitely are. Mm -hmm. uh, one, one last thing, I know in recent times, in fact on yesterday, uh, there was some information about some remains uh, mm -hmm. being found in the Startex area. Mm -hmm. uh, to begin the process of even trying to even address uh, something like that, uh, un unidentified uh, remains uh, of someone, uh, what are some of the steps that you have to go to in, in just even trying to even begin that situation? The first is a good documentation of the crime scene. Uh, as you and I are both were a forensic means of the court. So that process, getting that started, is going to be with court in mind. You've always got to have that in the back of your mind that uh, the work you're doing you should be proud of and you ought to be able to present that evidence to 12 jurors or 6 jurors, how many you have, get through the rules of court and then uh, make sure that you're able to present your case. And If somebody's criminally responsible, that they're held accountable for it. If not, then the truth needs to be told on that as well. So good documentation is the essence or, or the start of a good investigation. After it's documented through measurements, photographs, any specialized testing we need to do, then the body was respectfully removed and taken to our secure location at Regional Medical Center at the morgue. From there, um, well, to back up and say the documentation process started uh, then we requested help from a forensic anthropologist to come in from another coroner's office within the state. And she came up um, on loan from the coroner uh, in another county and actually came up and started an investigation with us to determine the identity of this individual. That's, that's my first responsibility is to determine uh, a good identity on these people. And with skeletal remains, as you well know, a lot of that's going to have a lot to do with either dental, sinus uh, identification, and or DNA to make a positive identification. And then uh, today we also did some imaging to see if there were uh, any uh, forensic evidence we could find, whether it be lead or anything else on the bones, to try and make a determination how, how this individual came to their demise as well. Well, Rusty, I definitely appreciate your time here today. I appreciate uh, you coming by to see us. Always good to, good to see you, and I'm glad we we're able to share this information with the citizens of Spartanburg. Yes, sir. Thank you for all that you're doing for us. Thank you very much. Right. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. All right. Yes, Stop by any time.